Hello and welcome to Meet the Agenda uh, for our, our second show. I'm Matt Lozon, uh, one of your two hosts. My other host uh, is in sunny Florida right now. Um, last we talked, he was looking at alligators and giraffes and lions at the animal kingdom. And I hope Bob Preventer is having a great time down there. I do my best to keep the ship sailing here uh, until he's back. So uh, the plan for today's show, uh, one, uh, review the highlights from uh, the last city council meeting. Two, uh, walk through uh, the April 3rd agenda. That's the next uh, city council meeting, which will be this Tuesday at 6 p.m. Uh, three, uh, highlight some other important meetings that are going on to um, make sure you, you know, ha have the opportunity to get up to speed and, and get involved. And four, um, you know, quickly recap some ways for you to get involved. Uh, after all, uh, that's that's what this is all about. So. Uh, without further ado, we'll jump in. Uh, so the last meeting uh, was uh, March 20th. So, you know, they're every two weeks uh, on Tuesday nights. Uh, it, you know, going through the minutes here, I wanted to highlight a few things. Uh, one, uh, and you can go back and see this, uh, the superintendent, Jeremy Ray, gave an extensive overview uh, of the, the fiscal year 19 school department budget. Um, very, very educational. Uh, he did a great job presenting all the information. Um, you know, fortunately, we've got more uh, state funding uh, coming in, which is great. Uh, so I, I encourage you to check that out. Uh, second thing is, uh, you know, there was a there was a vote to move ahead, sort of authorizing um, uh, delegating of authority around the, the the parking garage, and some good discussion around that. Um, you know, one piece I wanted to highlight there, um, you know, there was some confusion around uh, the mayor's downtown task force and, and what that is. Um, I actually didn't realize this myself, but uh, there's a group of, of city councilors that uh, will meet as part of this task force. Uh, I, I believe they meet um, in the mornings uh, during the week. And, um, you know, they talk about key things going on. I think there's some discussion about uh, potentially starting to televise those meetings uh, because in a lot of cases, you know, if you get a number of counselors together and, you know, they're, they're having discussions about whatever's coming up on the, the agenda, um, it could be helpful to have, you know, that available to the public. So we'll see there and hopefully that helps uh, clarify some, some confusion that there was. Uh, third thing um, was there was a, a plan to approve a uh, process for communicating what's going on um, with with uh, the the parking garage and with the um, the the parking or parking management plans, um, you know, which you know it's being discussed. Okay, what's the right way to uh, implement this parking strategy in order to help uh, fund um, the parking garage, um, opposed to having it full fledged coming from taxpayers? So, um, you know, there'll be discussion around. Um, you know, should there be more time restrictions on streets like Main or Lincoln Street? Um, you know, uh, how will it work in terms of paid parking? You know, will it be all of the parking lots? Um, how will it work in terms of potentially having residential uh, stickers? Um, and you know, how do we accommodate uh, local businesses so it's, it's it, you know, not too detrimental in terms of uh, making it difficult uh, for customers who may be hesitant uh, to, to pay to park downtown. So um, this process is, uh, you know, I think a tremendous step in terms of uh, helping, um, you know, ensure that the public understands what's going on. Uh, there was discussion about it originally being sort of a 60 day process. And I think some counselors felt, hey, we don't want to rush this. It's really important. Um, so it, it got moved out to, to 90 days, um, you know, with a cap of 90 days. So, you know, in the next uh, you know, a little less than three months. There'll be a lot of discussion there, and, and I'll make sure to highlight a few public meetings that are going to be happening where uh, you, as you know, a, a member of the community, have the opportunity to weigh in if, if you'd like to do that. The next, um, you know, there was a, a vote to approve uh, interns. You know, another. I think this is a, a neat, innovative program, and uh, our city manager is also a, a professor. Uh, so you know, it. Sounds like there's some just very talented uh, young people um, that you know we could tap into, have help with some projects, uh, and then two more things. Um, 
a, a plan was approved to move ahead with a community service officer program. Um, basically what this means is, um, you know, uh, departments across the state are having a difficult time hiring, you know, recruiting and, and, and retaining, um, you know, uh, great police officers. And, um, you know, this is sort of an idea to say, you know, there are certain aspects of the job of a police officer. So my understanding is one of them is, um, you know, handling uh, car accidents uh, that, you know, you don't need to be a full-fledged uh, law enforcement um, uh, officer to, to handle those things. So this would allow uh, for people to come on board, get the right training, handle those types of situations to free up time of um, you know full-fledged, uh, fully operational officers. Um, you know, it. I think we're thinking about it as a year kind of test, and it'll be interesting to see how that works. You know, you're seeing other communities like Portland recently um, made the decision to uh, bring in a full-time uh, recruiting officer. You know, so a lot of company, a lot of <laughs> not companies, a lot of cities are dealing with a similar dynamic and trying to figure out how to, how to solve that. Um, and then the last piece, uh, you know, in the minutes here, Councilor Swan, you know, I, I, I think he's been doing a great job, um, you know, highlighting and trying to sort of uh, help people understand what's going on with these parking discussions. But, you know, he encouraged anybody who uh, is, is thinking about potentially a referendum uh, that, that might sort of in a stronger way than the 2014 meter referendum. Um, anybody who's thinking about trying to move that ahead to consult with city officials ahead of time to make sure that sort of, you know, if something does go through, that, um, you know, there aren't unintended consequences. Uh, and, I, you know, I think that's really important. And I, I'd encourage you to uh, reach out to Councilor Swan if uh, that is something that uh, you are interested in. So. Jumping into uh, the agenda for this Tuesday night, again, 6 p.m. Uh, at City Hall. You know, you walk in the back door and it's up on the second floor. Anybody can attend. Um, you know, first, uh, there's going to be, uh, you know, prop a proclamation made. So, you know, it's a ceremonial thing. Every so often, um, you know, the mayor will highlight different days and weeks and, and um, you know, themes. You know, this particular pro proclamation is around um, uh, public safety telecommunications, you know, and, uh, you know, pulling from here. It says 500,000 dedicated men and women are engaged in the operation of emergency response systems, you know, at various levels. Uh, and, you know, what this is really about is, you know, urging citizens to show appreciation for uh, these unseen first responders in our community. So that'll, that'll happen at the beginning. Um, Next will be a presentation on city goals. So, you know, by way of form and process, uh, when you see presentation on a city council agenda, you know, that essentially means that, you know, somebody, a lot of times it's a, it's a staff member is gonna get up and, you know, probably walk through some PowerPoint slides or, or uh, some numbers, you know, to sort of provide an update or an overview of something that's going on or what's happening in a department or particular plans. Um, you know, what this isn't is a sort of, two-way dialogue uh, with the community. So there's no public comment on this. Um, sometimes you do see dialogue between uh, city officials and, and that presenter. You know, in this case is update on the 2018 city goals. Um, I don't know who will be presenting that, but you know, I, I recommend um, anybody interested in what's going on in the city, check out the documents uh, that you can find on the city website. I think uh, there's a link right on the homepage for the current uh, 2018 city goals. And you know, what you'll see is that uh, city officials have gone through a process of, of laying out priorities and some timelines and you know, everything is, I, I believe it's marked uh, uh, you know, high, medium, or low in terms of its importance uh, with one exception, I wanna say uh, a new, uh, I think it's called critical, uh, you know, a new level has, has been really highlighted to stand out. And you know, for instance, I think the parking garage was sort of uh, noted as a critical uh, item, but you know, check that out. You'll see sort of how things are being prioritized, you know, which is particularly important, you know, as budget season is here. Uh, then there'll be an approval of the minutes. Uh, that's quick. And then we go into uh, orders of the day. So, you know, orders of the day are items that, uh, you know, are, there's going to be a, a vote that happens and a decision that gets made. You know, a lot of times, you know, number, a lot of discussion has happened leading up to this. Um, but there is a final opportunity on anything that's being voted on for you know, the public to uh, express their view 
or express questions or concerns that they have, um, you get three minutes you know, before ultimately the council deliberates and a um, decision is made. And if an amendment is made, then uh, you know, there is an opportunity to comment on the amendments as well. You know, anything that could, you know, anything that's going to result in a vote. So the first order of the day is around um, authorizing a Graham, Graham Street sewer separation project um, in essentially, you know, the decision to move ahead with a, a, a particular uh, vendor here, which is a Dearborn Brothers Construction. You know, by way of process, you know, when, when uh, projects like this are going out, uh, there's an RFP or a request for a proposal that gets uh, put out to the community to sort of ensure fairness in the, pro in, in, in the process of, uh, you know, procuring things or, or spending money. Um, you know, you'll see that, uh, I, I, don't, I don't know if it's a state mandate, but um, I, I think it might be, but uh, like in this case, it was posted in the Journal Tribune, sort of in the classifieds. Uh, you'll see it on the city website. You know, something that I would encourage people to do is on the city website, you can actually sign up for uh, uh, an email list that will get you uh, these requests for proposals as soon as, it, as soon as they're published. You know, that's been something that helps me stay up to speed. I'd encourage you to do the same. Uh, what happened with the sewer project? It sounds like uh, four firms uh, sort of dug in a bit. Uh, two uh, wound up uh, making bids and uh, the decision was ma made to go ahead with this, uh, th this particular bid. In terms of how this is being paid for, um, it's being paid for from a, a bond, you know, a sewer oriented bond that was previously voted on and approved by uh, voters. And you know, the amount of money on this is just under a million dollars. Um, a little extra credit in terms of process. Um, if you were to look at the finance uh, committee meeting, which is immediately before the city council meeting every other week, um, you know, a subset of the city councilors sit on the finance committee. And a lot of times something has to be approved by the finance committee before it goes to the city council. Um, you know, what often happens is that it all happens in one night. So, you know, earlier in the night, uh, I think it's five or 5.30 when they have the finance committee meeting, this item is actually on the agenda there. Finance committee will vote on it. Um, you know, if it's there more than likely, you know, it's gonna get approved and then you know, it's already set on this agenda, so a second vote happens by the city council. Um, you know, it can be important to look at what's going on in the finance uh, committee meetings if, if you want to try to get up to speed. And again, you know, I think that's one of the reasons why, um, you know, there's a desire to televise things like the mayor's downtown task force uh, because, you know, discussions about some of these items to coordinate these things for agendas uh, uh, very likely happens at meetings like that. So, Next up um, is uh, approval of uh, an amendment to the Route 111 Mill Redevelopment TIF and Credit Enhancement, uh, and that's with the North Dam Mill. You know, one thing that I wanted to note with this is that I think it's really, really important. Actually, I'd love to sort of do a show with some of the developers to, to walk through some of these things for the community to understand that there are, ver there, there are multiple developments in the mills and they are very, very different in terms of how they're financed, uh, what TIF, you know, setup there is, um, you know, what, you know, what the impact on the community is, whether that's parking or it's a uh, number of children that live there that wind up going to the schools uh, or amount of taxes being paid in. And, you know, I think all too often, we uh, sort of uh, mix discussions about the different developments, you know. So, you know, Lincoln Mill, for instance, is very different than North Dam Mill. And, you know, I, I, I would encourage you to, you know, try to learn as much as you can about the different developments and sort of how these different things are set up. Um, you know, that said, especially with the, the parking garage on the way here, uh, there has been a lot of activity around uh, agreements and, and financing um, you know, uh, knowing that this, this parking garage is on the way. And, you know, when I say financing, some of that stuff like this, some of that is, um, you know, private stuff that you can find in sort of the registry of deeds uh, if, if you're interested in that kind of information. So this particular um, credit enhancement discussion, uh, you know, it's, 
you, you know, you can read some of the goals here. It's about improving the economy of, of Biddeford. It's about, you know, um, broadening the tax base and ultimately, you know, taking steps like this. It's with a belief that that's what this is going to do. Um, you know, one thing I wanted to note was it does in these documents sort of describe uh, there being a public hearing on April 3rd, which is Tuesday. Um, I'm actually a little unclear on this uh, when I was reading it this morning. Um, I don't know if, if this agenda item constitutes a public hearing or if that's a state mandated thing, uh, but you know, it does note that that's, that's the case. Um, you know, going back into sort of what this is all about, there's a couple big things as, as I understand it and read it, and you can read it for yourself on the city website. One is easements. So, you know, there are, there are major investments being made uh, downtown, and there's a major set of investments uh, in, in, or planning around sort of the river walk, you know, and that being a destination um, uh, for people who want to visit Biddeford and also just a, a great way to get out and explore for people that live here in Biddeford. And, you know, part of that is uh, the plaza that overlooks the falls, which if you haven't been down there is, is absolutely beautiful. And, you know, the reality is to get down there, you need to go through uh, a private property. You need to go through sort of the purple campus. So, you know, part of this negotiation appears to have been, um, you know, securing the rights uh, to, for the public to be able to access the Riverwalk um, through this property. And in exchange for that, you know, there are some, I think, concessions in terms of uh, incentives for um, this particular developer. Um, and all of this, there was, uh, I want to say it was two meetings ago, uh, a, a joint development agreement, um, which, you know, ties this stuff to sort of the delivery of a parking garage by the city. So uh, a couple key components here um, in terms of the incentives being offered. Uh, there is a cap of, you know, how much uh, can be paid, as, at least as I'm reading this. Um, and if I'm understanding correctly, it's two million dollars, two million seventy-seven thousand dollars, and two million seven seventy-seven thousand three hundred sixty-one dollars. Huh, that was painful. Um, so there's a cap. Um, it is contingent on a few things, including permits being pulled and valuation increases. So you know the city's seeing a benefit. And um, you know one thing I'm, I'm really unsure about, and this is the first time I've read something like this. There's a reference to uh, what is called the Pepperell Share Dedicated Parking Fund established by the city, which uh, I'm actually not sure what, what, what that is or what that means. So I'm eager to see if there's discussion about that uh, before the vote actually takes place and sort of learn more about what that is. Um, you know, th that, that new fund is something I'm not personally familiar with. Uh, one other note in here called out and you can see this in documents is um, it's it's sort of uh, excerpted that uh, this the city manager or his duly appointed representative is hereby authorized and empowered as discretion from time to time to make uh, revisions to the eight development blah 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 blah. Now, the point being, um, I'm not sure if that is a change or why it's actually highlighted in terms of you know the city manager being able to go in and sort of um, uh, forge ahead with 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 changes in terms of uh, these sort of credit enhancement agreements. Um, so I'd be interested to learn more about that. I, if, if it is a change, my guess is it's, um, you know, to allow the city manager to move faster or, you know, to be able to be in a stronger negotiating position uh, as these things are happening. So moving on to the next and last item on the agenda uh, is the confirmation of city clerks nominations of election clerks for 2018 and 2019. Uh, if you have voted uh, in Biddeford, you know, I think you will, uh, if you've, well, if you've voted absentee, you'll, you'll know that, you know, that's a pretty seamless process and a lot of people do vote absentee now. Um, but if you've gone in person, I think what you know is, you know, there's, we have one location and it is very, very well managed, it's very efficient. Um, and, you know, these folks are, are, are sort of a, a huge part of, of why um, our elections go so smoothly. Uh, so the people being nominated, do a very quick rundown and shout out because I, I think it's awesome to see people getting involved. Uh, Don, Donald Alley, Claudette Alley, Janine Alley, Andrea Ange, Margaret Bean, Ruth Boissonneau, Joanne Bovai, 
Patricia Boston, Mary Brown, Colomb Cody, Florette Cody, Alice Doherty, Martine Eon, Rita Farley, Alice Infecto, Rainy Fecto, Audrey Ferrick, Christina Gastelum, Priscilla Gobiel, Odette Gornick, Diane Grenier, Sean Hasey, Violet Hussey, Teresa Kennedy, Deborah Lamb, Rick Leverrier, Claudette Levesque, Joyce Locke, Alfred Martell, Diane Martell, Peter Memoris, Nancy Murphy, Sheila Nolt, Michelin Niveau, Teresa O'Leary, Ronald Paquette, Rita Parsons, Andrea Perry, Constance Russo, Barbara Siminski, Armin Tardif, Charlotte Tebenhoff, and Joseph Valenza. Thank you to all of those folks, uh, and uh, congratulations, assuming uh, the, the nominations here are accepted. It's, you know, the voting process is critically important, and uh, we're very lucky to have such a well-run uh, operation. So, uh, wrapping, wrapping up a uh, couple other things uh, on this. One is, you know, when these items are done, each of which, you know, you can comment on specifically, there is uh, uh, on the agenda public addressing the council tomorrow evening. So anybody uh, can attend. Uh, I believe first priority is given to residents, but uh, anybody can attend and speak for up to five minutes uh, about, you know, any item that's not on the agenda. Um, and, um, you know, this is a great opportunity to address the council. Um, I've had a chance to, to do it at, at a recent meeting and, um, you know, I, I found the, the council did a great job listening um, and, uh, other, you know, a couple of meetings ago, a number of people addressed the council and, and I think it led to a lot of fantastic discussion. So, you know, I hope to see people taking advantage of that. Uh, and, you know, then there'll be reports uh, from some of the key city, of, uh, city officials. Uh, other meetings going on that I think uh, folks should be uh, aware of. And again, you can, um, you can go on the city website and, uh, and, and see this and, and, you know, when there's an agenda or supporting materials, you can see those as well. But, um, you know, the budget committee is continuing to meet to sort of work through the, the budget process. Um, you know, that, that, you know, it's, it's, you'll see it looks like a city council meeting by and large, uh, if you're watching. Um, but, you know, there are some really, really important discussions going on right now. You know, you've got big valuation um, changes happening in the city, uh, which impacts uh, taxes, impacts funding. Um, you know, fortunately, we've got more state funding coming in, and it looks like that will uh, set us up for a lot of folks to see a, a decrease in their taxes. Um, and, you know, there are some major um, trade-offs that, you know, that, that need to be made. So, you know, um, for instance, you know, one of the things uh, being, being discussed is uh, our, our response times uh, with, with our ambulance services. And, you know, uh, can we or should we uh, make an additional investment to sort of improve the response times? Um, you know, and the reality is uh, we're like a, a family budget. You know, there are constraints everywhere. And sort of got to decide, you know, if I'm going to invest here or I'm going to invest there. So I, I highly, highly encourage people to tune in the budget uh, committee meetings. Um, there was there was one uh, last night, and then there'll be some more uh, coming up, although they're not uh, on the agenda yet. The like I said before, the finance committee meeting is immediately before the city council meeting. That's at 5 p.m. Tuesday night, and then the city council meeting is at 6 p.m. Uh, another key meeting is the planning board. Uh, I'm not going to get into the agenda, uh, but a lot of very very important discussion uh, discussions and decisions. Uh, happen there, you know, in, in terms of them, you know, figuring out recommendations, you know, ultimately they get handed to the city council. Uh, and, you know, I encourage people to check that out. The next meeting is, is actually coming up here uh, the night after the city council meeting. So uh, Wednesday night, April 4th at 6 p.m. And meeting materials are online. And then lastly, um, there are three public meetings that now are on the calendar in terms of um, uh, city officials hearing from the community about uh, the various aspects of, of parking. Uh, my understanding is the format of these meetings is to be listening sessions, so uh, there will be no sort of two-way discussion. It's purely an opportunity for them to hear uh, your perspective. Um, the first meeting is April 5th, so this upcoming week, 6 p.m. The following uh, week, April 10th, 
uh, again at 6 p.m. And then on April 12th at 1.30 p.m., uh, there, there is a third uh, meeting. Again, I highly encourage people to uh, get involved and have your voice heard. And if you can't make these meetings, there's also uh, uh, any easy to sort of find and uh, input uh, form on the city website where you can actually submit your, um, submit your comments uh, and they will be sort of documented, you know, they confirm back with you and they'll be given to all of the, 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 the city officials here, which, you know, I, I'm, I'm really, really pleased to see uh, sort of some in, in investments here happening in, in transparency and, and trying to educate the public and, and get the opportunity to uh, get uh, opinions solicited. And, you know, I hope that you'll take advantage of that. Um, you know, on that note, sort of, you know, if you're looking to get involved, you know, just a few ideas to consider. You know, attending meetings, you don't have to go there and speak. You don't have to, you know, state your name or sign in. It, you learn so much just by being there. Uh, so I'd encourage people to sort of check out the meetings and see them. And you know, I, I know it can be tough with, you know, with busy schedules uh, and, and the meetings being a little bit early in the evening, but it is well worth it if you, if you can be there. Again, remember there are two types of public comment at uh, most of these meetings. Uh, one is items that are being voted on. You can speak for three minutes. Uh, and the other is um, uh, at public comment at the end of the meeting where you can speak for five minutes. Uh, and the last thing is you, know, you can always email your counselors or, or utilize that form on the website. Uh, you know, I think my observation is they do a great job of, of, of reading all that information that comes in. And you know, I think it's something that's well worth taking advantage of. And, you know, a couple other things you can consider: um, you can write a letter to the editor. You know, that's a great way to put your perspective out there. It's, you know, I, I'm kind of a nerd in that uh, I, I've read almost every newspaper since the 1980s uh, that's been published here in the city. But you know, you look back in the 80s and the 90s, and there are tons of letters to the editor and, and tons of involvement that way. And you know, maybe we've replaced some of that with Facebook, but. You know, I think I think that it's a really important part of the discussion. I encourage you to consider doing it. It's really easy to do, uh, and it's free. Uh, and then, you know, the one last idea: you, know, you can come right here and you can make your own show. Uh, we have such an amazing resource uh, here with public access and the ability to to communicate um, and, and and discuss and and share. Uh, I would encourage you to do it. It's free. It's, they do a great job helping you put everything together. Uh, and um, yeah, I, I know personally I'm, I'm grateful for these resources and uh, I hope it helps. So on that, on that note, um, thanks for tuning in. Uh, by all means, uh, shoot me a note or give me a call or find me on Facebook if uh, you want to discuss any of this or, or, or we can be helpful in any way. And uh, we'll see you in two weeks, hopefully uh, with uh, Bob Boomer Preventure back from sunny Florida with a nice tan joining us for our next edition of Meet the Agenda.